It was like I took his heartbeat right into my wow. heartbeat and I whipped around to that cop and I got right in his no, face and my hand started to come up. And then I was like, oh no, I don't want to go to jail. Access more. Hey friends, I want you to know that your support can spread thoughtful conversations about faith across the globe. When you donate to the Access More Podcast Network, you fund new episodes of shows like mine, shows that aren't afraid to dig into real and vulnerable topics. Make a gift today at accessmore.com slash donate. Life is like a roller coaster, but it's better when we go through it together. Welcome to the Candace Cameron Bure podcast. Season six of the podcast starts now, and it's all about our emotional health. Who are we on the inside? How do we know? And what do we do about it? My guest host for the next three months is Jenny Allen. Jenny is a New York Times bestselling author, the founder of If Gathering, and the host of her own podcast called Made for This with Jenny Allen. She's also my friend, and I am so thrilled that we get to spend this time together. From the beginning of the podcast, I've said that this podcast isn't about me. I've made it for you. So come along this journey as Jenny teaches us all about emotional health. Jenny, welcome to the show. <laughs> I am so excited to be here. This is so fun. Thank you for having me. You're so welcome. Thank you for, for being here. I am so excited about our conversation. Me too. I have loved getting to know you over the last couple of years, and we're still getting to know each yeah. other, to be honest, but I've been a fan of your books and... Um, I've never been to an If Gathering conference, but you have the most amazing speakers that are there. Yeah. I always wish I could you go need to, to one of them. Please I come. would really love yeah. to. Um, but anyway, this is a thrill for me to have you. And Thank I know you. that we're going to learn so much on this season together. I'm excited. And I'm a really emotional person. As everyone who watches the podcast or listens knows, I'm never afraid to cry on yep. it. And I think our vulnerability is a really important thing because it just opens a door for yeah. people to feel more comfortable to be able to also share what they may be experiencing. Yeah. So I'm stoked about this season. I'm so excited too, because this is the real stuff. I mean, we can't, mm -hmm. you know, I think so often we go through life and we're talking about the circumstances of our life and we don't mean yeah. to. I mean, we were just doing it before. We've got kids similar ages. And so we're just yep. catching up and, and they're, they have crossover with their friends. And so we're catching up on the circumstances, but so rarely do we really go to, but how does that make you feel? Yeah. And that really yeah. is the place, the deepest place of connection. But I also think it's hard for people. Some people have a hard time going there. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of reasons for that we'll talk about. But I do feel like this is the best stuff, right? This is, yeah. the, this is the messy, good, best stuff that makes life yeah. memorable and deep and real. Absolutely. And I think it can be so hard because you, when you become vulnerable, when you get into that deep stuff, how are you really feeling? You have to feel safe yeah. with that person that you're talking to. Yeah. Yeah. And we're just going to pretend we're perfectly safe here with all these cameras that y'all are just not going to tell anybody our junk, you know? Um, <laughs> I know. Remember that yeah. as you're watching. It's a real thing. But, and I think, you know, I think that's true. I think one of the real hardest part about sharing, which we'll talk about as we go, is just because that is such an important part of emotions. Mm -hmm. They are God given, mm -hmm. they are built. And I don't think we all know that. I think we've got to start by admitting that yep. this is something that largely has been demonized in our minds. Yep. Sadness, fear, anger. These are things that even from a very young age, I remember thinking I shouldn't be crying mm. and I shouldn't feel um, angry. And I, I should, you know, I just remember somehow getting those messages. I don't think my parents were shaming me or super unhealthy mm -hmm. about their emotions. I just don't think we were, we were all very emotional. I think my mm -hmm. home growing up wasn't very emotional. So from a very young age, we are getting messages, all of us, about yeah. whether emotions are good or bad. And a lot of times somewhere we get that negative emotions are bad and detrimental and they hurt relationships. And so I think it begins with first, how do I even feel about emotions? Do I 
do I approve of them? <laughs> Am I supposed to feel them? Mm -hmm. Am I comfortable with them? Mm -hmm. Do I, do I know that they're good and that they're gifts? And I think for a lot of people, the answer is no. Yeah. I've always been a pretty emotional person. Um, and I feel like emotions were, were safe in our house growing up. But it's been an interesting journey as I've gotten older. Yeah. And I can't wait to dive into some of those specifics. Yeah. As, as the conversation goes on. But do you feel like you picked up messages that they're bad? Or do you feel so? Let me let me actually okay. give a, even another <laughs> option. So I don't even know where this comes from. Again, it could be from our childhood. It could just be from our culture. But there is a part of my brain that judges my emotion. So I can feel sad, but then there's another part of my brain that's judging that I'm feeling oh. sad. Does that make sense? Totally. And I think that part of us, a lot of us have, mm. a lot of us feel ashamed or judgmental that this should be easier. I shouldn't right. feel so overwhelmed. I shouldn't, I right. shouldn't be sad about this. It's not a big deal. You know, there's that yeah. part of our brain that's saying those messages mm -hmm. can be really loud to where it's hard to turn it down. So even if we grew up, if we're emotional and we feel like we're pretty healthy, mm -hmm. I think that part of our brain still is at play. Yeah. I'll throw a little twist in here. Okay. Because acting at such a young age. Yeah. And I was on a television show since I was 10. I had to be able to tap into my emotions. Mm. And they would write crying scenes for me on Full House all the time because I was good at it. Wow. I could pull the emotion up quickly and have tears and cry as to what yeah. was in the scene. So even looking at my emotions from that perspective, I never thought that they were bad. Right. They because were I had, they were useful yes. and I had to be able to access them quickly and yeah. easily. Um, and so I think I carried a lot of that into my personal life too. Yeah. Do you feel like, how did that carry? Because do, is there a little bit of, I'm supposed to feel this way or I'm not supposed to feel this way? Is there that voice in your head? <laughs> there is. I'm laughing because I'm like, yeah, well, I have to access my tears really quickly. I also had to be able to turn on the smile and I'm happy right. very quickly too. So yeah, right. By the end of it, I mean, we've all watched Full House. So uh, yeah. by the end of an episode, like everything worked out like largely. Of course. So it had to turn to a smile pretty quick. Yeah. Y'all had to reconcile the fight or yeah, solve exactly. the problem in 30 minutes, right? Exactly. <laughs> and that was very much in real life too. So a lot of times when there were sad wow. moments in my life, it was like, if I was in an adult world, it was like, suck it up, put mm -hmm. the tears back because we need to put a smile on our face because we're about to be like in front of other people. Wow. You know, which happens like for everyone. You don't have to yeah. be on a TV show for that to happen. No, but, but it's, it was, it's a it very makes so, quick, so much sense. Yeah. Um, turnaround. Yeah. But I think what you're saying, the reason I'm saying wow is actually because I think it's what all of us feel. We think we can be sad, but only for so long. I remember a friend of mine from India, we were talking about her living here and how hard it was because she lost her mother after they moved here. And she said in India for months and months and months, we are, we wear black, like we are allowed to grieve. People stay with mm. us like for weeks, like they come and they stay with us and they take care of us. Here, it was like, I'll bring you a casserole. But like by the next time they saw you, they were kind of hoping you were better. And it's just such a different yeah. opposite relationship with grief. I don't think as Americans, we are great with grief. I don't think it's something we we like, I don't think it's something we want to stay in for more than 30 minutes. No. <laughs> so I, I think yeah, it applies think to everybody. Hide in their grief yeah. and want to want to kind of hole up. Yeah. And that's the opposite as we'll talk about th that your brain needs. Your brain is actually built to not be alone in pain. That is mm. how God built your brain. And the reason emotions are so important is because they connect you to people. They connect you to him. And so when you shove them down, which we'll talk about the mm -hmm. controlling and the coping and the concealing mm -hmm. and the different things we do with them for very valid reasons. I mean, I just, I want everybody starting this journey with us to just hear so much grace that, that there's a million reasons our emotions feel all knotted up and tangled up. Mm -hmm. There's, this is, this is hard. And yeah. it is a very, um, I would say a little bit tedious task to untangle them and to, to kind of look at them and to say, okay, I, I feel this feeling. I don't know what to do with it but, and I'm scared of it. 
Mm. And I don't even know if it's okay for me to feel it. And that's scary. It's scary work. And I'm thinking about, because we're talking about things right now, like sadness and fear, grief. But what about happiness? Right. That's even a, an emotion that people can be afraid to feel because maybe they feel guilty for feeling happy or maybe yeah. they don't think it's appropriate that they're happy if someone else is sad. Isn't that amazing? I mean, we get the, the negative ones we might be hard on, but we're even hard on the good emotions. I know. Like, we're even hard on joy. Listen, can I just tell you, I Lev just recently got yes. married. I posted this video on my Instagram and it, the ceremony had ended. The bride and groom walked down the aisle. The wedding party walked down the aisle. Then the song switched because they had a song for themselves in the, in the bridal party. The song switched for uh, Mama Loves Mambo. And that was for the yes. parents to walk down Girl. the aisle. And I did a little yeah. shimmy shimmy <laughs> down the aisle uh, because it was like fun. We're now so going great. into the party. Let's yes. celebrate. And if anyone knows me, they know I love celebrating. Right. I'm a happy, happy person. Yeah. That is my sweet spot. I love to be in that. Yep. And can I tell you the amount of comments I got? I mean, I was like, give me the popcorn. I'm just going right. to sit here and read these comments because they were so entertaining <laughs> because people were mad no. that I gave a little shimmy shimmy. Stop it. Walking into the reception. I can't. I, it was crazy. Y'all, do you <laughs> read your Bible people party? Like David was dancing through the streets naked. And I know yeah. I thought, I Come thought, on. I didn't know you were supposed to act like you were at a funeral if you were it's at a, a wedding. wedding. I'm like, See, it's this a is where America gets it all wrong. You go to other it, countries. I've been to Rwandan parties mm -hmm. and I'm like, they dance the whole time. That's what they do. Like it is. Yeah. My son's Rwandan yeah. and. I'm telling you, I, there's not a more fun culture. I yeah. love his yeah. culture because yeah. they, everything's a party. Everything's a yeah. party. And they dance and they sing and they, there's no restriction. And I do think for whatever reason, I, I, I just don't, you know, I think there, there's American messages. I think there's Christian messages. I think there's all kinds of messages mm -hmm. that just get in our head and make us afraid of mm -hmm. feeling even the good things. It is so sad. But what's unbelievable is the science says that when you suppress, and many people have heard this, but what I saw was so fascinating is literally the same part of our brain that contains joy mm -hmm. is the same part of our brain that contains other emotions, mm -hmm. negative emotions. Mm -hmm. So when you suppress all the negative ones, the reason that joy feels suppressed is because in the, you don't feel it in your body is because it's the same part of your brain. So we just scientifically, when you're, when you're pushing it down, it, mm -hmm. it's, it's shutting it all down. And, mm. and so what I love about this conversation is it's scary. It's, but it really does bring more joy in your life too, mm -hmm. because that's ultimately, we all want that. That's, yes. that's the common human desire, right? We all are searching for what makes us happy. And, and I get that. And I, you know, I think sometimes we can even judge that part in other people, which is silly because, you know, we as believers, like the, Paul even said, like, if Jesus is not raised from the dead, eat and drink because tomorrow you die. Mm -hmm. So there's a sense Paul was even saying, Hey, if this isn't true, if Jesus didn't raise from the dead, if this, if Christianity isn't true, then live only for your happiness, which I think is how the world has gotten into a little right. bit of trouble because it always ends up off a cliff when you're mm -hmm. selfishly looking for happiness. But happiness in itself is this great gift that God gives us despite circumstances, but especially in the middle of the wedding. That just, I'm mad at people. <laughs> Get on there and comment myself. <laughs> I had to chuckle. So like, have you ever experienced an emotion that just felt like it just smacked you in the face oh, yeah. and you're like, wh where did that come from? Yeah. Yeah, I have that happen a lot. And I think we all do. And there's usually a reason for that. There's something underneath the thing, right? Mm -hmm. It's not, especially when it feels like a disproportionate reaction. So recently I, I was with my daughter and she had just gotten married too. And, and she and her husband live near us. And they were talking about moving away, which is so normal, right? Mm -hmm. So obviously normal <laughs> that they would want to move away. Yes. And and so I'm listening over dinner and I, my heart starts racing. I feel anxious. I feel like I'm about to throw up. I, I, I had to like end the conversation because I, and I didn't want her to know because I knew in my brain oh. it was ridiculous, right? Like and my mm -hmm. brain knows this is not sane. Like you are being a controlling crazy person. <laughs> 
but I could not help what my body was doing. Yeah. Like I, my emotions were, were reeling. And so, you know, that, that for me bothered me because I want my daughter to tell me what she's feeling and thinking. And if they have mm -hmm. fun dreams about their life, I don't, I don't want to panic. I want to hear her dreams. Yeah. But that kind of sent me on a little bit of a discovery to realize. And I actually opened the book with a story because it was really part of this journey and why I think it's so important for everybody to do this journey is what is the, we don't want to be crazy people. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't. And we don't want to be unlikable. Like we yeah. want our kids to feel safe with us. We want mm -hmm. our friends to feel safe with us. But I knew I was like, I'm going to push her away and mm -hmm. I'm not going to get to be a part of these stories in her life and their adventures and whatever they do, if I panic mm -hmm. and try to control this situation. And so, you know, I talked to my counselor who I love and he said, Jenny, I want you to remember a time that you felt that way as a child, the, maybe the first time you ever felt that panic and a memory came up and I was seven years old and I was driving home from my great grandmother's funeral and I didn't know my great grandmother but I, I was looking out and seeing the stars and I remember just tears falling down my face and not wanting my parents to hear me cry mm -hmm. because I was embarrassed because I didn't know my grandmother that, my great grandmother that well. And I knew that they knew that. And so I remember all those thoughts. Wow. But I wasn't even thinking about my great grandmother. I was thinking about death because I'd never been around death before. Mm -hmm. And I think that feeling of I'm going to have to die and I'm going to have to die alone seven years old, I remember thinking this. Wow. And I remember those tears falling. And, and then there's another story I can tell later, another time I felt that, but I, I would say what I realized was they were all moments I was afraid of being alone. I was mm. afraid of everyone leaving and I would be alone. And so I think just working through that and processing what was really wrong. I want my kids to obey God to do whatever he's put in their hearts to do. Mm -hmm. I don't want to control them. And I don't want to be the crazy mom that is, you know, passive aggressive. Right. Right. That's kind of how we become. Yep. And so I just realized that behind that thing is usually a bigger, there's a bigger thing. something. So have you felt that where you've overreacted or <laughs> I recently just did. That's why, uh, um, of course, like my whole life, there's, sure. there's moments yeah. where you just, the little you, things you react yeah. and you're like, whoa, that was way bigger than I expected my reaction to be. But I was at the airport. My husband dropped me off and I thought I could carry my bags into the check-in by myself, but I just couldn't manage with my coat and my backpack in the bag. <laughs> and he goes, well, let me just walk you yeah. into the check-in. So he rolled my bag into the check-in was probably gone. I'm not exaggerating. No more than 20 seconds. I mean, it was very quick. And when he came out, there was the, the officer, the cop, the parking cop writing the ticket for the car. Sure. Shoot. And he, but, but the, but the man started to really berate him. Like, yeah. like, you know, not just give him the ticket that would have been fine, right. but was very like, why are you parking here? I'm getting, I'm towing you. I'm just was kind of awful with a really mean attitude. And I came back out after I checked in to talk to my husband and this cop was just going after him. And my husband's a pretty strong guy. Yeah. And he was being very self-controlled, like very calm. And I'm looking at this situation going, oh my gosh, well, like, what did I miss? What happened? And when I went in to hug him, my husband, and I was like, take a deep breath, take a deep breath. But hit my heart on his heart, wow. his heart was pounding out of his chest. So I knew how much yeah. self-control he was having it, just listening to this cop yell at him. Mm. And... It was like I took his heartbeat right into my wow. heartbeat and I whipped around to that cop and I got right in his no, face and my hand started to come up 
And then I was like, oh no, I don't want to go to jail. I don't want to go to jail. Or get videoed by someone <laughs> ended up on TMZ. I <laughs> but I was so angry, so fast. And right. You couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe how fast. And I was like gritting my teeth and clenched my fist and put them down. Right. And was like, just turned around and wow. I was like, have to walk away. Like, good job you know, on that. Was, oh, it was so hard, but, but, but it was such a shock yeah. of anger because I'm not typically an angry person. Like that's not, I don't have like those knee jerk reactions of like, I go into anger mode, but it was, it felt so out of the blue and so strong and shocking to me. I went, oh my gosh, what just happened? I got so angry so fast, but it was like out of protection for my husband. So how did you feel even about that? Like, did you think I shouldn't have done it's, that? What did you no, feel? It's, I knew I handled it fine because I, right, you I held literally it in. held it in and I just turned around and did another about face and walked away Yeah, and gave my husband a kiss and he got in the car and we left. But it scared me because yeah. I didn't realize how angry I could get. Right. And I'm like, whoa, that didn't, it didn't feel like me. Yeah. And it was like, where's that coming from? Yeah. So then I'm going, do I have a bunch of pent up anger that I don't know about? Well, I think we all do. I think of course we do. I mean, that's the thing. That's the thing is the world's jacked up right now. Yeah. I don't even think we realize it because it's the only world we've lived in. But right. I'm just telling you, like there is more stimulation and more chaos and more noise and more stress than almost any generation. I'm not talking about wars and that kind of thing. There are those outliers. But even then, even I just talked to a friend that was a Navy SEAL and he was like, you know, when I was um, Navy SEALing was actually my favorite because we would go to war and we would have to do the most horrible things. We would have to turn our emotions off, but mm. we would come back together and cry together in the barracks. Mm. And sometimes we need that. And so what is so especially hard right now is we're dealing with so much chaos in a chaotic mm -hmm. world. But yet we don't, we aren't great at coming back together and crying together in the barracks, right? We're not as right. connected with other people. And that, that really is the thing that heals us. I mean, that's, that's the beautiful thing is when you can go, yes, I was so ticked and I don't know why. And then process that, which I want to ask you a million questions okay. about it. So <laughs> ask away. if we go back to that, like what, when you think about that, what word would you give it? Would you give it rage? Is that too strong? No, that's what it felt like yeah. inside. It really was rage. It's more than like bugged at your kid, right? It's, yeah. It's deeper. I was angry. I so, mean, I wanted to hit him. So can <laughs> you remember the first time offset that you remember feeling that in your real life? In my real life? Mm -hmm. Like as a kid? Yeah. Like that kind of anger. Anger is like not one of my normal emotions. Yeah. So... So do you feel like you can even remember a time recently? Another time? I mean, got to say something for some of the other episodes. <laughs> we'll talk about anger. We'll give a whole week to it. Let, we'll come back to it. Because I think there is this reality that you're right. I, I think, I think we're, there's some things about us that are similar. And one of those things is I'm pretty good at controlling my mm -hmm. world. So therefore I don't get that mad because I'm like, we'll fix it. Like just, and I don't mean that in a right. like bratty privilege way. I just mean that in a, um, there's a will, there's a way like, let's just, yes, let's just fix. And then there's things that aren't fixable, you know? Mm -hmm. And then there's moments that it's like, I can't, this is totally out of my control. So yeah. I want to go to, there's three in the book. I talk about three C's. I talk about control, cope or conceal. And that we all tend to do those three things mm. with our emotions. Which one do you think you do the most? So control, control, cope, cope like or control conceal. would be, um, you kind of controlled it in that moment, which is great. Um, sometimes we, these aren't all bad, right? Mm -hmm. But if we do them perpetually and never feel our emotions, that's mm -hmm. where it gets unhealthy. So coping would be um, Netflix, alcohol, food, you know, mm -hmm. just zoning out, like trying not mm -hmm. scrolling, trying not to think about Got it. it. Um, concealing would be, you know that your emotion is there, but you're not going to share it. Mm. So controlling would be, um, you know, it's there and you're going to fix it. Yeah. So I definitely say I'm control. Yeah. With a sprinkle in of cope. Coping. Yes, sure. <laughs> right. We all love to cope. It's too easy these yeah. days. Yeah. Yeah. Food is my drug of choice. Yep. So, but I'm definitely not a concealer. Yeah. You'll share. I'm it. not. Who do you share what? it with? 
Who feels safe to you? Oh, my husband. I have a cup, my best friend. Yeah. I've known her longer than my husband. I'm like, she knows everything about me. The best. Yeah. And, and then I have a few other very trusted people, probably two other trusted people in my life, as well as my, my mom and dad. Um, and then, and God. Yeah. And I honestly, I, I try to go to God first before mm-hmm. I go to anybody else. I've made that a practice and a habit probably over the last three years. COVID kind of changed all that. So I'm like, I'm going to run to you first, God, yeah. before the, I share with other people. In 2024, delicious, safe, and convenient meal prep is just one box away. This is your year to ditch the mystery of the meat aisle and get American meat delivered to your front door instead. Subscribe to any box and they'll add over two pounds of pre-trimmed, better than organic chicken breast to your order for free. Not once, not twice, but every order for a year. Good Ranchers Chicken will change what you know about chicken. It's pasture raised, given zero antibiotics or vaccines, and is so tender and juicy, you won't believe it's the same meat you've been cooking most of your life. And when my Good Ranchers box showed up, everything was perfectly frozen. Simply go to GoodRanchers.com, pick your box, use my code CANDY, and enjoy $189 of free chicken in 2024, plus $20 off your first order. Stock your fridge with easy to prepare, clean, delicious meat all year long. If you're not sure which box to choose, try their brand new weekly essentials box full of pre-trimmed beef and chicken that helps you meal prep so you can save time without sacrificing flavor. Make sure you subscribe today and use my code CANDY to claim over $200 in free chicken and new year savings. GoodRanchers.com, American Meat Delivered. So I think there's a lot of people listening that would say that's not, I don't do that. I don't Mm. go to God first because I feel like he's judging my emotion Mm. or I feel like he's not safe Mm. or I feel like he's disappointed in me. And I just want to say what you and I both know, because we both, I'm someone who too just feels really safe with God. I'll shake my fist. If I get mad, I'm like, how dare you? Me too. How dare you? And Mm -hmm. I'll just let him have it. And where that feels very biblical to me is two places. One is David and the Psalms. And he was so emotional and mm-hmm. he was a man after God's own heart. And he wasn't afraid to, to just work through it with God. And if we really view God as a relational God and him wanting a relationship with us, those are the best relationships. Like you just named your favorite people is what you just did. Yep. Because those, and Largely, they are probably your favorite people because you share your emotions with them. Mm -hmm. And so God becomes that when we share them with him. Mm -hmm. But as long as we think he's judging our emotions and as long as we're judging them, we won't feel that safety. And yet, have you ever seen The Chosen? I haven't seen it. I've seen the first season. You sound like me. I took me forever. I was like, yeah, it's cheesy. No, I really loved the first season. I was so impressed with how well it was done. It's unbelievable. I know so many of the people that do the show. It really is amazing. I just have to get back on the wagon and start watching. Okay, so it only gets better. Season season three is just my favorite. Um, But- it, the the way, reason I love it is the emotion Jonathan Rumi played mm. Jesus as. And I think that has been something that has been missing from media. I mean, largely Jesus has been portrayed as just kind of someone flat, yep. you know, uh-huh. emotionally. And so what I think Jonathan did was he brought all, you know, laughter and tears and just such a full human experience, which of course Jesus was that way. Everybody loved him. Kids loved him, you know? Right. So of course he was emotive and connected to people. People flocked to him yeah, and wouldn't have if he was like that. But I think of Hebrews <laughs> in chapter four that says, for we do not have a high priest, meaning Christ, who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who is in every aspect has been tempted as we are yet without sin. And I just love that word, like sympathize. Another translation says empathize, like he's mm-hmm. waiting. So when you go to mm-hmm. him and you share your guts out, whatever you're feeling, however you are, he 
he empathizes. I just think that's so powerful. It's so powerful. And I say this all the time and I'll say it again, because without having read the Bible, you wouldn't know that. No. You, and that's why I continually encourage people on this podcast, on my socials, to read the Bible. Yeah. It's the most exciting book you can read, but it gives you, when you read it, particularly chronologically, it gives yes. you the massive overview of God and his character. Yeah. And had I not read through the Bible in that way and continually read, you know, I used to just kind of like jump to whatever chapter or passage I want to read. I mean, there's all different ways of studying the Bible. Sorry, I don't mean to like totally rabbit trail. However, once I could see the character of God Mm. through the Old Testament and the New Testament to see that he, he wants to, he wants to hear everything from yeah. us. And yet he already knows everything. So yeah. you can't hide from him. And even when there's disappointment or what you may think is disappointment, God wants the best for every mm. single one of us. He just wants us to draw closer to him. Yes. So instead of in shame, are you trying to run and hide like Adam and Eve did? He goes, let me cover you. Yeah. Come back in and let me, let me, truly like resurrect the the situation for you. Um, he's always drawing us that way. And I yeah. think that gave me so much peace and knowing that my emotions are safe and I can shake my fist at yeah. God. I can give him the big stuff and go, why? Why'd you do this? Why, you know, yeah. be angry. And God's not right. mad at me right. for thinking that or feeling that or even questioning that. God's like, I, I, I got all this. I gave you all those emotions for a reason. Yeah. Well. And there's a sense of closeness that comes from that, right? So when you think about your closest relationships in life, you probably fought, you've probably gotten angry at each other. You've probably um, at times been, you know, frustrated or even just sad with them or disappointed in them. And I think that's what we're talking about is so Mm -hmm. many people view God as a religion that they have to achieve Mm -hmm. and that God's sitting there waiting. And obviously we don't, right? Even on our best days, like it just feels like, you know, even on a great day where we're getting up for church, like I'm letting my kids have it. So, (laughs) you know, what, what, I can't even like go to church, like have a Sunday good day, you know? And so it's, there's a sense of just, yeah, we're not going to get it, but that is grace. And yet we're afraid of it because Mm -hmm. we think it's too good to be true. And we want, to believe that we could measure up. So we worked so hard at it. Yeah. But the gospel like shatters all that. It's yep. this backwards way. It's, you didn't, me- you didn't do enough. You never are going to do enough. Yep. I died not only for your sins before you believed in me, I died for your sins after you did because you're going to keep messing it yep. up. And it doesn't mean we don't strive for different, but there's just grace when we don't hit the mark. And yeah. I needed a dad like that. Like I wanted a dad like that. And my dad is that way today. It's so beautiful. He's come so far, but wasn't completely when, when I was younger. Mm -hmm. And so when I met Jesus and I understood grace, I was like, this is the best thing I've ever heard. Yeah. Like that I can, it can be messy and Mm -hmm. I can be exactly who I am. And he loves me. And he, he also wants to change me because, you know, he's, he don't want to leave me in my sin. That would be a, that would be sad for me, but, but he, he loves me and he wants a relationship. It just blew my mind. It blew yeah. my mind. And it still does. And I think this is what it's supposed to look like. It's just mm-hmm. this, but, but I don't know that we view it that way. I think we view it as measuring up. I think a lot of people see God as a disappointed dad. You yeah, don't feel that I, way. I, I, I agree that a lot of people do. And I, I don't yeah. view him as, I'm so in awe that I get to have this relationship yeah. with him. It is so exciting to me. Every day it's exciting. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, I also have a great dad and yes. I know I had a great, I have a great example. And it wasn't hard for you to, to even associate mm-hmm. with having a great dad. And then this father is like, wants even more than my earthly father. Mm. I mean, just everything. But I know how, what a struggle it can be for people that don't have that right. relationship on earth with their yeah. dad. Or mom. It's hard to imagine. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to imagine it's that good. 
And I think so many Christians too, there is kind of a sense of to measure up, to be accepted, right? To, Mm -hmm. I need to to not dance at a wedding. (laughs) So I think we've got to also realize like, yeah, our God's different. And he, Mm -hmm. he is, you know, remember he was making wine at weddings. So we got, you know, there's, there's, he's pretty fun and he's pretty great. And yeah, yeah, if anybody listening is thinking, you know, I don't see God that way. I would just say, then what you said, read your Bible, like read your Bible. He's a lot of fun. I (laughs) know. I know a lot, a lot of people and me included, you can just listen to other people talk yeah. about God. You could listen to a sermon here and there, and then you've gathered your theology and sure. what you think about God from bits and pieces right. of other people and songs and movies and music and conversations. But if you've never read the Bible for mm. yourself, well, then you don't know what's true in there and right. what isn't. Right. You know, we're in such uncertain times and it does feel, I think a lot of people feel scared Mm -hmm. about lots of things, scared about the future of our country, scared about the future of the world, scared about um, their own personal life and their families. And um, I think there's so much that we could live afraid of. And I, I know that a lot of that is real. And this is a whole Mm -hmm. season about like listening to those feelings and then knowing what to do with them. But I just want to say too, that What the word of God does, it is this anchor. Mm -hmm. It's like, this is bigger and better than the chaos around me. And when we pay attention to it, it does, it shifts from, I mean, I just think of the disciples on the water, you know, when the Mm -hmm. sea is wild and then they go down to the bottom of the boat. He's like, hey, by the way, I control the sea. (laughs) Yep. It's okay. Like you're on the boat with the person that controls the sea. And I just think that's what reading the Bible does is it reminds us like, even though it's crazy and he didn't, you know, it's okay that the disciples were afraid, right? So Mm -hmm. much of, we'll talk about so much of the Bible when it says, do not fear is issuing comfort. Like I would to my kids when we're in the tornado closet and we're afraid a tornado is going to come. It's don't be afraid. Like I, I've got you, We're, we're together. Now we can't control the sea the way that God does, but it's a comfort statement. And Mm -hmm. I really believe he understands and empathizes and sympathizes with our fear. And yet we forget if we don't read our Bibles that we're on the boat with the person who controls the chaos. Yeah. (laughs) He controls it all. I love that. Um, As we, as we are, you know, winding down, what are some emotions that you feel in one day? (laughs) <laughs> ah, that's or so maybe great. one week like <laughs> oh, give wow. us a snapshot you know I, I i think i'd love to share more next week about just my journey with this because i'm not a big feeler actually mm. i'm more of a fixer i didn't like my feelings and okay. i wanted to push them away and so it's so funny as i worked on this book my husband would laugh he was like jenny i've never heard you talk about your feelings so much because i was so aware of them all And so I would say out loud to him because I was telling everybody else to do it. I was like, I've got to practice it too. I would say out loud to him, you know, every single day, every feeling I was feeling as I was feeling it. Wow. Yeah, it was a lot. He was like, (laughs) you're crazy. (laughs) But it was also just a practice. And I feel like it was a muscle for me where I had to work it and grow it to where Mm -hmm. I could be healthier emotionally and notice these things more in me. And so now I would say one of my favorite things to notice is happiness. I know that would be obvious, but... I don't think I was good at that because I was stuffing the other ones down. I don't think I noticed happiness as much. And I think it makes me more grateful. Like Mm -hmm. I just noticed that feeling when my daughter and I flew in yesterday and even in the rain, we, so it's raining in LA right now, which it never rains in LA, but here I am. And we did Turo, which this is about to be a terrible ad for them, but I get to, it's like a, it's like Airbnb for a car. Oh, yes, I know so what that is. We I haven't used that. We but. walk through the rain to get to the car, right? And so we're standing in the rain and the app isn't working. It can't open mm. the car. Mm-hmm. And so we're standing in the rain with nowhere to go. We're in the middle of a neighborhood. Um, and I'm and I'm thinking to myself, like, I could be really sad right now. So this is just yesterday. I could be really sad or I could be really mad. And instead, we just were rolling laughing. It's like <laughs> we were sopped to the bone. Yeah. And I think I'm just, I'm learning that even in being sad or mad, which I was a little, certainly. Yeah. 
it's also right there with it is all the happy mm-hmm. and all the funny and all the laughter too. So I love the big mix of it all. I love that. I love that. Well, let's get to one of our listener questions. We wrap up every episode with love a it. listener question. Let's do it. So this is from Jennifer, who says, how do you balance having a tender heart and being tough to fight through the hard circumstances? Oh, that's such a good question. It is a good, a good question. I would say this. I would say have so much grace for yourself mm. that there are seasons where you have to be tough. And I remember one for me where I stuffed all my emotions. In fact, that's kind of where I learned to do it was that it was so dark and there was so much difficult around me that if I would have crumbled or felt the sadness or felt the disappointment, I couldn't have taken care of my kids. I couldn't have managed. And my Navy SEAL friend would say, that's a gift that God, a feature that God put in our brain that we can, sometimes we have to be tough, but there's got to be a time where you feel all that. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is when we suppress our emotions, when we control them and conceal them and cope with them all the time, and we never allow ourselves to feel them, then they go somewhere in your body. Mm -hmm. Our bodies and minds and hearts and all of it is connected. God built us that way. And they go somewhere and you, they can only stay there so long. (laughs) So that's why I wanted to like explore like, okay, you you lost it there because there's probably something that you're like, this has been bothering me, but I, I, I don't want to think about it or, or deal with it. We all have those things. Yeah. And there's grace for that. I think God mm-hmm. has so much grace for that. Mm-hmm. But what he lovingly does, and you see it the most with the woman at the well, he goes, listen, I want to help you with that thing that you're scared to say. I want to mm-hmm. help you with it. So that, that part of you that is embarrassed, that is ashamed, that is scared, I actually want to work through that with you. But we'll do it when you're ready. And we'll do it, we'll do it when when you're ready to heal. And it may not be at the point of your husband dying because in that moment you have to do 12,000 things to survive. Mm -hmm. It may be six months later. And I think that's the grace I hope people feel from the season is just the grace to be where they are, whatever that is, to, to be curious, to just rest that little judgmental part of them and to explore and notice the ways God built them to know him better and to connect with themselves and other people better. But it is, yeah, it's a messy journey. It's not real clean. I know <laughs> it's not. Well, I'll answer this too. Yeah. Um, so Jennifer, I feel like I'm a, I'm a person that has a very tender heart that has been put into harder circumstances than I yeah, wanted young to age. and to have to be tough. And I inherently don't feel like a tough person. Yeah. I feel much more tenderhearted, like someone else could make that decision. And yet I've, I've really grown into it and learned how to make those tough decisions um, through, throughout the last few decades of my life. And so when, as a tenderhearted person, when I have to make a tough decision that doesn't inherently or naturally feel good to me. I always go back to, is this going to honor God? Mm, If if this is honoring to God and this is the decision I need to make, even though it's a tough one and a hard one, that's, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. And you have done that really well, by the way. (laughs) Thank you. You have. It needs to be said. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. I appreciate that. It's not easy, but it's what it comes down to. So sometimes I just have to remind myself like this isn't easy, but God is with me. And I know this would be most honoring to God. So I'm going to make this decision. Yeah. And that's that. Well, and back to the scriptures, because that just gives you a compass. Like the reason you even know, because somebody's Mm -hmm. somebody listening is asking themselves, I don't know what's pleasing to God. And that's Mm -hmm. how you know. Like we know because of that, not because of our gut, not because of right, even our great pastors are teaching or all that we know because of the word of God and I think that is you're right it's just there can be a million opinions Mm -hmm. but ultimately it's what does God say and yeah yep guys this is gonna be an incredible season I'm so glad that you've joined us for this very first episode but just get ready for the next three (laughs) months that's all I can say Uh, Jenny and I have a free gift for you it's a simple one page guide to better emotional health and you can get it at candace.com or click the link in our show notes until next time be grateful all day every day 
Hey friends, thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this conversation and tell me in the comments what was most helpful. And don't forget to subscribe. Candy Rock Entertainment, all rights reserved.